for anybody that either wants to venture into comedy, podcasting, or or writing, since you're writing Average Boy, uh, what would your wise counsel be for them in using their gifts for God's glory? Yeah, don't do it. Um, there's already enough competition out there. So yeah, go be a teacher, you know, do something noble. Um, <laughs> no, if I, if I have to give advice, uh, is right every day. That's the hardest part. Even if you don't feel funny, even if you don't feel inspired, sit down at your desk at least 15 minutes a day, stare at a blank page, stare at a blank cursor, you know, and just try to write. Because the hardest part about writing is sitting down and starting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so there's so many times where I'll sit down and write and I don't feel funny. And I did this chapter, uh, chapter 11 of the new Average Boy book. I, I, I'd finished this story arc and I was like, okay, I don't really, I know I'm going to write about Thanksgiving and Christmas, but I don't really have anything to fit right in here. And I was like, and so I just started writing. Average Boy got on his bike you know, just to start something. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even end up using that opening sentence, but just starting it, I finally got this real, and so far it's my favorite chapter of the book, but I didn't feel inspired, didn't feel like writing, but I sat down and just started writing. So that's my advice to people. I think it's to pay attention and listen to what people growing up and you have said about you as a compliment. You know, people would say to me, Robin, you're funny. You're funnier than the stuff I see on TV. Like, why are you not famous? And, and the people would say, listen to what people have already told you. I think maybe your gifts have already been exposed. You just have to think about it. You know, sometimes it's a shift of mindset. You can be more like Eastern in your thinking that perhaps the whole world is actually kind of in favor for you to do well. You know, maybe if we would just like listen and to what people are saying and be very open to that, as opposed to this is my box and this is my religion and only my church is going to heaven and only my people are only going, you know, if you can kind of expand that and think, you know, maybe God is talking to you through other people, maybe even not in people who go to church. Yeah. And if you can be open to that and listening, I think sometimes you might be surprised. Sometimes, I mean, personally, even in my life, we've, we've studied the Bible with people, someone you met in a grocery store and you just happen to say, Hey, you know, you want to go to church? And they'll say, as a matter of fact, I was just praying about and said, God, if you're real, show me yourself today. So I think if you just kind of put it out there to the universe and, you know, let God work through other people, even people you don't think, and just keep your eyes open because God really, it's, you know, there's the whole scripture. Don't put your, your, your talent under a bushel, you know, don't, don't hide your talent. Did I say that right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Don't put your talent, don't hide your talent. Cause I mean, who's looking under a bushel anyways, right? Nobody. Um, that was a joke. Uh, <laughs> the FBI. The FBI. Are they there? I don't know. In this, not, not this past year, they haven't been looking. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'm put my tinfoil back away. Thank you very much. Okay. But um, I do think that um, if the, the, the world and God wants you to succeed. And if you just kind of be open to it and say yes to things, you know, I've had some friends of mine who they get offered opportunities and you might think, oh, well, that's kind of dingy or, oh, that's small change. I don't need to do that. Or that's giving up too much of my time to volunteer and do that for free. You know what? You might be surprised. You say yes to something and you get there and you meet someone else who actually has exactly where you want to be at. You just never know. So if you don't put yourself out there and be open to situations, I mean, that was what happened. I mean, frankly, in all honesty, um, um, I go to a church and I was really only dating people at my church. And so it wound up that I went out and met Mark and he wasn't going to my church, but I was like, well, you know, Hey, I'll go out with him. He loves Jesus. And now we we're dating, but sometimes you can be really caught up in this box that you only think certain people who who are in a certain place are going to get you where you're going, but you just have to be open. So mm -hmm. saying yes to things. And, and when you say yes to things, it, it creates trust in other people. Cause they're like, Oh, Robin will say yes. Or it, Robin will do it. And, and not in a, like, okay, I'm not going to go into that whole, like we, we all have our martyr syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of us Christians. Yeah. Just put some, Hey, put some more bricks in my backpack. You know, I, I'm going, I'm going up this hill anyways. Just put some more in there for me. I'll take them up there for you. But um, I think that um, just saying yes to things can kind of open up our minds. 
that's make. Oh, honestly, I would say, you know, be ye holy as I am holy. So, whatever your talent, gifts or talents are, he gave them to you, and he wants you to use them in the most pure and holy way, um, not for, you know, all the dirty crap that's out there and whatnot, but just for good, for good, to give him glory, that uh, no matter what you do, you're doing God's will if he's getting the glory. So, yeah, I would say that would be the wisest counsel I could give, that if you put him first in all things, you know, then uh, it'll completely work out. You'll, you will be exalted if you take second, you know, take a backseat to Jesus. You exalt him and he'll exalt you. Don't take no for an answer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're going to get that. And um, what, what was I reading today? I don't know who said it. I think it was one of the Beatles that said it. It said every, every kid's an artist until they're told they're not. Ooh. I was like, wow, that's interesting. You know, and I believe in that. I believe that. That's what I was talking about. I don't believe in tearing people down. I believe in building people up. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and what I've discovered being a performer is I've run into these types of people where it's like, be good, just don't be better than me. Yeah. And once you become better than that person, they, they, they act like my soccer team. They're a choo-choo train and they let me get in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it's the same thing I tell my team. Knock the choo-choo train out the way. <laughs> uh, don't knock him out of the way. We'll get a red card for that. But try to get up in front of the choo-choo train and stop it. And, uh, and take the ball out of his choo-choo train legs. <laughs> yeah. Take it this way and, and shoot and score. I mean, the thing is, because we're doing entertainment, people think it looks easy. Mm-hmm. They think it's fun. But the reality is it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of dedication. And, and you probably won't be around if you're, if you're soft in the sense of, oh, no, someone didn't like me. I mean, we bomb on stage, you know, and it hurts. And you almost have to, like, you almost have to go home and remember what that feels like. Mm-hmm. So that it, and, and if it does these two things, then you know you're cut out for it. If it makes you go, I'll never get up there again. Well, then that wasn't for you. <laughs> <laughs> but if it makes it, if it, but if you're a crazy person like myself who says, you know what, I think I can do it again, <laughs> then you are ready. Well, I, I think that what, whenever you recognize your gift, whatever it may be, you know, make that the way that you will further the gospel. I mean, it, it could be a lot of different things, but but whatever it is, do it in an effort to further the gospel of Jesus Christ and, and, and go for it and don't be afraid to follow it and uh, see how far it can take you. Um, and sometimes it's fearful, you know, it's like, wow, I, I, I am pretty good at this, but I, I'm afraid, you know, um, and, but you're doing it for Christ. Remember you're doing it for the Lord mm-hmm. and he's going to help you, you know, just trust him, have faith in him to, to make, a reality, what you know, it is, is something that you're strong at. Um, and then, you know, and then not, it's not always easy. Sometimes you have to leave your job, you know, nobody wants to leave the job. Sometimes you do have to leave your job, mm-hmm. uh, count the cost. Can I leave my job? Jesus always said, count the cost before you come down this road. Well, you no know, way. I can, I do this. I don't know. You got to look at all the, the things that, um, that come along with you chasing that, that, uh, dream, or that, that gift that God has given you, you know he's given you to use for him. And you just got to make the decision, am I going to do this? But uh, you just just do it. I mean, that's the number one thing in life is to, to live for him and to do whatever it is you do for him. Make your whole life centered around that. Uh, and he'll take it from there. But it's not easy and it doesn't work out the way you would like it to. But just keep holding on and trust in him. And uh, he'll make it something so good you would you didn't even know it could be this good yeah. i'm still looking for that it'll happen it had to happen yet but i know it's there you want to go first? yeah my wise counsel would be passion it would be what stirs you what moves you what 
is, is, is the strongest thing in you. Because we 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 go to church and, and they would say, get involved in every ministry you can, because then you'll find your way. But the thing is about it is like you can do that too, and then whichever one stirs you the most is where your passion, what what's in your heart. So I would say it's it's the passion. So whatever that passion is that you 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 just can't. You just have you have this drive to to want to be with those pe- those type of people or like um, homeless is not one of my passion, but I, I go out and I work with homeless company, uh, homeless people. But my passion is to see people being healed and, mm-hmm. and, and to come to Christ. So that's my passion. So it's it's what drives me. And that's what it makes me happy to see other people happy. So I would say that passion to make that makes you happy that's what you want to go with and, and to make it look like you're, you know, you're doing something also good for somebody else mm-hmm. or yeah, it's just that passion. You, if it's that mm-hmm. passion that drives you, if it, it stirs up in your heart and your spirit, that's what you want to do. I'm going to say um, definitely first pray, definitely seek the Lord on it because too many times we can, we, we can say yes, get, too many times. We can say yes <laughs> and then we run out there and then we're so let down or disappointed because it's in our minds it didn't work out the way it was supposed to and one of the biggest things question would be well did you seek the exactly. Lord on that first and did the Lord direct you in that way and so my biggest thing would be pray about it and wait and wait on the answer because when God's ready to do it and have you move in that, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever it is, whether it's, you know, a podcast, whatever, you know, whatever, it's going to fall in line and in place. Um, will it always be perfect? No, because we're always going to, I mean, Somebody you know, it, put our yeah, <laughs> we put our, you know, we get in the, we tend to get in the way, but for the most part, for the overall part, it's going to fall in place and it's going to be like, oh, this is what it is, you know? And so um, that's my big, that's my biggest thing. That's why a lot of times I think right now we're in the midst of, um, we haven't put out a lot of stuff yet because I want to, you know, we're praying and we're seeking the Lord and asking him for direction. Where do you want us to go next? You know, we don't want to step out beyond ourselves because this wasn't made of ourselves. This is a God thing. This is definitely a God thing. We want to make sure that we honor him in in that with everything that we do. And so pray, 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 pray. I do believe that because the Bible does say his 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 light, his light is a lamp to our feet. So he will show us which way to go as long as we're stepping in his light. Sometimes Mm -hmm. we, we, sometimes we step out of that light and we take it to where places that we're not supposed to take it <laughs> and like will said if it's a, if it's so burning so deep in your soul then you know god's gonna you know god's gonna honor that and say okay this is what you need to do this is how it needs to look this is how it needs to set up this these that you know um oh, you can, you can and, like, and, and like <laughs> yeah and you know like um and dave i know you see it a lot you know even with the pod you know with podcasts a lot of people are, there's been times where i'm like well maybe i should you know maybe start monetize going for monetizing on this but god didn't tell me that Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to st- I'm not going to go in there. I'm not right. doing it. You know, it's tempting to try and do it, but I'm not, God didn't say do it. So I'm not doing it. And I know you've seen, you know, you know, a lot of people and you see that end of it. And so God didn't speak that to me. So I'm not going, I'm not going to do it. So self move <laughs> out the way. <laughs> like ludicrous move self get out the way get look at you dave <laughs> Yeah. wise counsel would be to take that leap and trust god um whatever god has given you to do definitely trust god with it there are going to be tough times there are going to be tough days when you take that leap you may not get the support you may not get the backing you may not get um a lot from it but if you do what god has told you to do and called you to do guarantee that he will take care of you he will take care of your vision he will take care of your dream and he will provide for you um he will bring people to you who will support you along the way um, I know that from experience. I know that for a fact. Um, everything that I'm doing with the podcast, with the radio show, with the ministry, everything is literally um, me walking into what God has, has called and told me to do. 
I've been rejected. I've been so no. I've been a lot of people have turned their backs on me. A lot of people have stabbed me in the back. But at the end of the day, I know that this is something that God has told me to do because of all that stuff that's happened. If it's yeah. if if it was easy, <laughs> it, 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 God knows if it, if it was easy, then, you know, all this would be um, worthless. But, you know, Christ knows, you know, how hard it is to get things going. Um, and he wants us to have that. We learn so much in the struggles. We learn so much um, in the in the in the heartache and the hardships. And it I, actually it keeps us humble. So just understand that you know you're going to go through. You're going to you know deal with things. But at the same time, uh, know that God is for you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, and what He has promised, He has promised to um, to see it come to um, come to an end. Like when I say come to an end, I don't mean like it's going to stop right immediately. I'm, I'm talking about He's going to see it through till yeah. the end. Um, and whatever he says, he, he is not slack concerning his promises. Um, and anything he says, it will never return to him void. So make sure that, you know, you stand on his word and stand on what he has told you and given you to do regardless. Yeah, man. Again, this is going to be one where, hey, listen, guys, I, I am a sinner, too. I mess up, too. Matter of fact, my wise counsel for you, I actually just had to repent for this. And I'm pretty sure a lot of Christians are probably going to need to repent for this. So my wise counsel is if you're going to use your gifts for glory, for God's glory, then make sure it's for God's glory and not your glory. Mm. And the way you know that it's for God's glory and not your glory, again, I am literally preaching to myself right now. I promise you. The way you know that it's for God's glory and not to glory. And my pastor, hopefully he's listening to this. He just talked about this in our Bible study on Thursday about being the, a good shepherd like Jesus. Um, and, um, and so my answer is going to be very similar to what he said in that sermon. But the way you know that you're doing it for his glory and not your glory is that you're going to do it even when you don't get the accolades, even though when people are not listening to it, even though when it's not popular, even if you get, uh, if people uh, criticize you for it, uh, crucify you just like they did the disciples for it. Matter of fact, you know, you're doing it right. If people start wanting to crucify you um, and then, um, and then and, and you'll do it without getting paid. Right. And, and so, a lot of time when people have talent, we we make their talent who they are. And when we're in reality, we're supposed to use that talent to bring the glory back to God. And so if you got that talent, man, and you got a platform, man, use that platform to, to share the gospel or, or not already yet. Just live out the gospel. So when people see you on your platform, they see Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that that's my thing, because I will stay in the book of John. And this pastor, I don't know his name, but he's from Cal one of the Calvary Church campuses or whatever. And he was basically saying the primary nature of sin is being self-focused and self and selfish. He was like, and he was like, um, he was like, if you if you're focusing on yourself, matter of fact, I'm gonna read it. It's in Romans 8, 5, it says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their mind on things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is, is life and peace. For the mind set on flesh is hostile to God. So even if you are trying to, you claim that it's for God, but if you set it on the flesh, like I want to be famous, I want to get a lot of views, I want to make a lot of money, I want this, I, 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 I. God is saying that's hostile to him. You know, set your mind on that. And when, 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 this, when this pastor said this, I had to, I had to, uh, I literally had to repent over it, man. Cause I'm like, you know what? A, a lot of times I won't go live because I'm afraid about messing up. I'm worried about what people look at me, you know, or, or, uh, I won't take a picture cause I gotta make sure it look right. Or, you know, like I said, what keeps me up at night, I'm praying to God, like, do you really tell me to do this guy? Like nobody even looking at blessed money. Like I got like 30 <laughs> people on the app. Like, are you really, but God, but my pastor was just saying a shepherd. He said a shepherd, and hopefully I don't butcher his words. Um, um, shout out to Pastor Daniel, Jesus Center. If you're ever in L.A., check it out. But anyway, uh, he said um, a shepherd never leaves his sheep, but sometimes the sheep will leave the shepherd. That's where you get the whole, you know, a, a good shepherd will leave the 99 and go get the one. So when basically what he's saying is, is that uh, 
if if I'm a shepherd, if God called me to do something, if I'm using my gifts for God's glory, then it all the outcomes don't really matter. I'm doing it because God said do it. And I'm going to be there, whether the sheep are with me and they rocking with me or if they leaving. And the minute you start, the, the minute that the sheep start praising you and you start wanting more of that praise, I just want you to think about what God said and kicked out of, out of heaven. So that's mm-hmm. my wise counsel. If you're going to use your gifts for glory, make sure it's for his glory. It, you know, and the beauty of it is if you put God first, then he's going to take care of the rest of your needs and everything else is going to fall in place. That's what I got. Uh, and uh, we'll let uh, uh, Ivan uh, handle this one first. For anyone that's looking to step into using their gifts for God's glory, what is your wise counsel? Uh, go ahead, <laughs> even <laughs> if you're afraid. Uh, I think, uh, I think that there's, it can be like two, two sides of the coin. Mm-hmm. You can pray too much and just wait for the sky to open and just the bright light came and the word, the Lord said to you, go, you're my son and I'm going to be with you. But for that reason, we have the Bible, the Holy Spirit. And the other one is just not pray at all. It's just try to go and just, I don't know, break your teeth in every corner. I think it's a little bit of both. And the, the fear is not going to be, it's not going to go away. You have to learn to do this stuff without the fear and hoping that your closer relationship with Jesus is going to lead you, is going to guide you in all, in all the hard moments. And that is not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be simple. And it's not going to be, uh, I don't know, it's just like vacation. Actually, it's even more hard work than I can ever imagine, but I'm so happy to do it. All right, uh, Brandon, you're up. What's uh, your wise counsel for anybody that wants to use their gifts for God's glory? Yvonne always gets my answer on this one. So we've, we've actually had this one. <laughs> we we have to switch next times. time. Yeah. <laughs> so he always gets my answer. So I think my, my first answer would be don't be afraid. You know, go, do it get started. And so Yvonne's got that one. So I'll, I'll do another one. I would say um, it kind of ties in with one of our founding principles or our founding oh, refrains yeah. at, uh, at Brainy Pixel and it's don't get ahead of God, right? Mm-hmm. We say that every time we have a meeting, we, it's constantly in our prayer. It's constantly on our mind because one of the stories I haven't gotten to tell yet here on this podcast is kind of how Brainy Pixel shifted gears. We've been around for about 10 years. And just in the past mm. three years, we've kind of reformed our whole company. And so re- restructured uh, the way we do things. And y- you have got to be obedient. If you read the Bible at all, you will see that God blesses his obedient children, right? When you rebel, he chastises you. He has to, he has to draw away from you when we rebel. But when you do, when, when you do what he says and you are obedient, he will bless you just like any good dad. Right. And so I would encourage all the creatives out there to understand what their gifts are and begin using them in a way that you can glorify our great King in some way. And whatever God tells you to do, whatever he leads you to do, whatever you feel is the next step, pray about it and then be obedient. Don't hesitate. Go forth, do what he says. He'll meet you there. Um, I would say to just be able to step out of that um, shame that sometimes comes with being a Christian, Um, not necessarily in a bad way. We should never be shameful of who we are, but because of where our nation is right now, um, it's a little tougher to wear our hearts on our sleeves and be the biblical person that we're supposed to be and fighting the truths. Um, so just be wise in how you go about that without offending anybody, which is easy to do nowadays. Um, and just going through and doing everything, um, out of love. Uh, second, second Timothy two twenty one. they need to uh, write that down, uh, tape it to their mirror, write it on their heart, uh, save it on their phone. You know, second Timothy two twenty one. that's the, that's the way that God is explaining for us to give him the glory for our gifts. So I would, I would tell them to recite it, memorize it, recite it, memorize it, have it saved, whatever you got to do. You know, if you're one of those crazy uh, Christians that like to tattoo themselves, whatever, tattoo it. You know what I mean? Put it on a T-shirt. Whatever it takes for you to do, 
You know, uh, sprinkle it with ice cream, you know, honey and ice cream, spell it out, eat it. I don't know, <laughs> you know, get it in you. You know, uh, the way I do it, I read it and then I digest and, and marinate on it. And then it gets in me, you know, but I, I would say 2 Timothy 2.21, they need to get that scripture into them and, and, and pray it out. Pray that scripture out and watch how God's going to transform your gifts. I would say, first of all, don't underestimate the power of God and what he can do. I think we all think, well, I'm not smart enough or I'm not talented enough or that that's not something I could do. I I would say, you know, let, let God guide you into that because, you know, I certainly had no intention of ever sharing my story or being out in the public with my life. And real quickly, the first in speaking engagement that I was offered was at the Cincinnati Christian University to talk to seminary students. And, mm -hmm. and I said, there is no way I'm sitting in a room full of ministers. This was early on. I'm not, you know, not going to happen. And I can remember just thinking, okay, well, maybe I should. And then I thought God kept pushing me to do this. And then someone else mentioned it. So I think use your gifts that God's given you because that's what they're there for. And, and he, he'll take care of it. I mean, you just go out there and do it. Um, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have anything great to say or do, but whatever it is, do it and just do it. Absolutely. Just do it as the uh, mm -hmm. old uh, uh, non-sponsor tennis shoe company uh, says. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know how wise it is, but uh, yeah, I would say that being okay with your unique style and voice and and when i say be be okay with it like don't don't think you've got to sound like everybody else or your for your art to look like everyone else's because i've really come to believe uh, and maybe it's through encouraging artists at my church but that every single one of us were created in such a unique way for a reason like the art that flows out of our uniqueness is unique for a reason. It needs to be shared. You know, you think about it, like we have four gospels in mm -hmm. the Bible. They're all saying the same thing, but they're all slightly different to where we may identify with one of them more than another, or we may read a passage in one and go, Oh, I didn't think of it that way. And mm -hmm. so like, if, if, me as a songwriter and like my worship pastor as a songwriter or my friend over in Florida as a songwriter, if we're all pouring our work into the church, who knows uh, who, who God's going to, you know, what God's going to use to express a truth to someone. So trusting that your unique voice, your unique art, God wants to use that and he will mm -hmm. and to not worry about um because critics yes critics are out there uh and you know yes it takes a lot of bravery to share stuff out on the internet because you're you kind of almost feeding the lions in a way sometimes um but to try to again i love the name of your podcast gifts for his glory it's not for our glory it's not we have to take our eyes off of that. We have to think, okay, obedience. What's what's a step of obedience in pouring out into the church what God's poured into me? And to really lean into that and, and to be brave about it. Um, and then I'd say to like find a community um, that is encouraging to you um, if you don't feel brave uh, to share. Uh, find a community that really um, helps you forward in that, you know, something like Creatively Christian or, um, you know, at my church, I started Arts for the Kingdom, these these events to encourage our artists because I felt like that that was there was a lack there. Like we had a ton of people in our church that were super creative and super talented and they weren't really using their gifts to glorify the Lord. And, and now they can and they have a safe place to share and We've seen some people bring out talents and gifts that they haven't used for decades. Mm. And um, they're rediscovering the joy of creating art. And that's a huge gift uh, to me as, as their cheerleader. 
Um, but uh, yeah, find a good community to plug into where you'll be encouraged, um, especially um, in a way that is uh, glorifying to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some groups out there that would really encourage you forward and, you know, um, getting your feet wet in the industry and being discovered and all this, you know, yeah, that's exciting and that's cool. And everybody wants to, you know, be known and be heard, I guess. But um, if it's not for God and if it's not, um, yeah, I'd say start there. Really make him your focus and don't worry about the critics and, oh man, yeah. <laughs> Find an encouraging group of people. Uh, for anyone looking to step up and use their gifts for God's glory, what would your wise counsel be? Stop thinking about it and uh, put a plan into action to do it. Because as long as you think about it, you'll just think about it. Yeah. You know, you got you to gotta start doing it. If you want to be a stand-up, you know, if you want to be an actor, you know, go get some training and do it especially stand up, just get on stage, go do an open mic. You might not even like it. I tell people all the time that, that come to me, hey, uh, you know, what do you charge for, for comedy classes? And I said, look, um, get on stage and see if you even like being in front of people. Because mm -hmm. that's, you know, because that's part of it. It's like, if you don't like being in front of people, it, it might not work out for you. Yeah, but stage right and stand up don't go well. Stop and do. For anyone that's looking to step up and use their gifts for God's glory, whether it's in comedy or in general, uh, whichever way you want to take it, what is your wise counsel? Well, I don't know if you're asking the right person for wise counsel, but you know what I would say to that question is that um, we kind of talked about it earlier, where um, I, I think we need to we need to uh, submit to God and um, and and follow Him, and we need to actually listen to Him. Um, you know, for so many years of my life, I've, I've again, I, I thought, you know, I was the captain of the ship, and, you know, and I'm doing things my way. And, um, I, you know, it's it's funny how, you know, how many times you can fall down and and then uh, and then realize don't don't realize, uh, you know, that the answer is, is follow Jesus, you know, and it's been there right in front of front of me all my life. And. Um, but for whatever reason, I, I think, uh, you know, I think I know better than uh, the one who created the universe. So for, for whatever reason. So, um, you know, it's we're, we're some stubborn people. And I, I know I, I certainly am. And, uh, you know, just 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 look to the Lord to to, to lead. And, um, you know, like you said, he he can open many doors and, and he will if you let him. Um, but, but that's my, that's just, you know, stay in prayer, read the word, um, make your relationship with, with Jesus priority, you know, and, and don't put that on the back burner because just, you know, he will always be here for us. But, um, you know, if we really believe that we, we need to pursue him and we need to pursue a, a relationship with him first and foremost, which, um, you know, I, I need, I just need to remind myself on a daily basis to do that. And, you know, we all fall short, but, um, but, you know, we need to, uh, lean on him. Is, uh, for anyone that's looking to step up and use their gifts for God's glory, what would your wise counsel be? Okay. Okay. So this is going to be hardcore. Uh, your gifts better be good if you want God to be getting glory, okay? None of this Christian, we're saved by grace. I didn't train for this, but God has called me. No, we cannot be watered down using our gifts. We can't be anything less than excellent because we're already getting judged. So you need to be good at what you're doing before you say that you want God to be involved and get glory. God, God rewards hard work. God rewards faithfulness. God rewards putting the effort in. You don't just start a podcast and just start rambling in and you've never turned the camera on. There's so many people out there. Like my friend Bone, my comedian Bone, he's like, we don't like have Christian McDonald's and like not cook the burgers. So the, you know, the term Christian comedian, it used to kind of bug me because I, I was like, well, I'm a comedian and I'm Christian. But whether your gift is woodworking or filmmaking or writing or whatever, you can do it, but put the work in. 
And don't just put it on YouTube three seconds later. Just so you know, YouTube lives forever. So um, I, I just feel that we need to be excellent at what God has called us to do. And also look for the signs that you are in God's will. Look for the favor. Look for the open doors. Look for the signs that this is where God wants you to be. I did not set out to be a stand-up comedian. I set out to marry Matt Damon and have a very successful uh, career on Party of Five, which I was, you know, uh, that did not work out for me. But if I hadn't been willing to take a left turn into where God saw me and God said, I want you to do stand-up comedy. I want you to do, you know, live performances. I would still be slugging it away trying to be girl number four on sitcom. You know what I mean? Like I'd still be mm -hmm. nurse Kathy on general hospital, which was my part. So I just think that you need to look for the signs that God is guiding you and ask him all the time. I ask God all the time. I just say, God, if this is not your will, then take it away. And that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, you know, your will be done. And all we can do is work as hard as we can and be as good as we can. And just know that everything about you is an example to the kingdom of God. Everything, what you do on Facebook and what you do off Facebook, what you watch in front of your friends and what you watch on your iPhone when nobody's looking. So be excellent at life and then God will bless you using your gifts. So final question. Okay. Every guest, uh, for anyone that's looking to step up and use their gifts for God's glory, what is your wise counsel? Okay. Um, just do it. Just, you know, when you look back, you can see God setting the stage. Usually from the time that you, you know, were, or a child, there's those those things that you just love to do that just become, you know, that are just natural to you. And you think they're natural to everyone else, you know? And they're not. Those are those are your gifts. Those are the things that, you know, whatever it is that you, you're just you're great at and everybody is just in awe. Maybe you're um, a whiz on, you know, with your computer skills or your decorating skills or um, you can sing or whatever that is. Whatever just comes natural to you and you can't understand why, well, of course you can do this. That's what you think. Of course, you know, can't everyone? And it's mm -hmm. like, no, everyone can't. Those are your gifts. And so, um, just you just have to give those over to God and just let him direct you and open the doors and just be willing mm. be willing and um even if you're fearful i always say this do it afraid i'm afraid of everything i don't like to fly by myself i don't like to travel alone i don't doesn't matter do it anyway. Do it afraid. Mm. And and God's going to take care of you. He will he will take care of you and he wants you to have to um depend on him. Yeah. You know? If if it's so easy um to to step out then you don't need him. Mhm. Mm so I'm clinging to him right now because a lot of the things that I'm doing, they're beyond me. Hmm. And that's a good thing because when you get too comfortable, then it's, it's not good. So right. I would just say just, you know, you probably have that thing that you want to do, but you're like, Ugh. you're holding yourself. Just, just do it. Yeah. You know, just try it. Just, uh, if it's comedy, try an open mic or find someone else that's doing what you want to do and 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 you know connect with that person you you got you got to start at the bottom uh in in my opinion if you look at all the great heroes of the bible the ones who were successful came from the very humble beginnings mm. They, they came, you know, Jesus born in a stable. David was the shepherd boy. 
uh, you know, uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were, were carried away as, as slaves. Joseph was a slave to Potiphar, and then he was in prison. Uh, so, so many people, and, and I see this in, in Christian comedy, I see it in, in Christian country music, I see it in, in, in people that want to uh, be in leadership in churches. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a saying, uh, you, you want to be in the pulpit before you're ready to stack, but you're not willing to stack chairs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so my wise counsel is be willing to start at the bottom yeah. and, 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 sh- and learn a servant's heart. Uh, I think everybody that wants to use their gifts for God's glory, sometimes they want to use it for their own glory. Yeah. And, and that's why they want to start at the top. That's why they want to, oh, well, you know, I just, uh, I feel a calling from God. Uh, I think Joel Osteen ought to just go ahead and invite me down to Lakewood right now. I'm ready to speak to 27,000, you know. Or, uh, yeah, maybe Franklin Graham should have me come with him on tour the next time he does a revival. Or, uh, you know, uh, I need to co-write Beth Moore's next book. You know, uh, I want to uh, open up Chanda Pierce's tour. You know, that, that's that's not how it goes. You know, um, like Joseph was a good servant to Potiphar. Joseph was a perfect prisoner in the prison, and 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 that prepared him to then be leader over Egypt. Mm-hmm. So, so my wise counsel is while you're in the prison, while you're in the, the, the slavery or the bondage or the low, the lowly person, the shepherd, if you're not doing your very best there and seeing that God gets the glory for that, then you're not ready to, to, to step into the, to, to the, the, the prime light. And I think that's why we have some of the, the moral failures that we have in, 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 uh, in the Christian body. Yeah. And I'm not casting stones at anybody because it can happen to any of us. Uh, we have to, you know, the, the, the devil is coming around like a roaring lion uh, looking who he may devour. And, you know, pride comes before a fall. So we need to always be on guard to, to protect ourselves, to not let ourselves get into comp- compromising positions. And I, I think that when some of these Christian leaders wind up in these compromising positions, it's because they're doing it for their own glory and not God's glory. So uh, start humble and stay humble. For anyone that's looking to step up, use their gifts, their talents, their passions, even their experiences for God's glory. What would you say your wise counsel is? To not wait till you have it all together. He needs you now. Um, mm. So often in ministry, we feel like when we get that degree or when we get rid of this in our life, and what he needs is a willing vessel to be used right now in your beautiful mess, in the chaos of life, in your imperfections, because he goes for those imperfect failures because then it's a greater miracle Mm -hmm. and it's a greater testament of his strength. So it would be to don't wait another day. Be used now for his glory. Realize that God speaks and you're not deaf. And Mm -hmm. you you should never be willing to go anywhere um, without the guidance of God having taken you there because where God guides, he provides. Mm -hmm. And so if you can wait on him to give you the guidance, then it will build your security around the provision you need to follow his guidance. Uh, But sometimes we run in front of him or we lag behind him and that's where we get in the trouble with provision. Um, And so uh, seek, seek the presence of God in order to have the guidance of God and you will have the provision of God. How about that? For anyone that's looking to step up and use their gifts for God's glory, whether it's in acting or or educating or advocating, uh, what is your wise counsel for them? Um, Well, I would, one, don't feel pressured by society. Society and marketing and advertising, they all do such a good job of trying to get you to want more and do things different and compromise. 
don't be pressured into that. But also, to specifically to actors, I have found that so many actors, for whatever reason, feel like because they're an actor, they have to do, they have to be willing to do anything and everything, or they shouldn't be an actor. But mm -hmm. I, I like, I want actors to realize like you can say no, you can have boundaries, you can have morals, you can say no to a project, you can decide you don't want to be on it after you've read the entire script and you're not comfortable. You can walk out of class, like you can tell the um, acting coach like, hey, this scene isn't for me, it's not my cup of tea. Um, like I just, I want actors who have morals and like have these boundaries to feel more empowered to stand, to stand up for themselves. Because I, I just, it breaks my heart when I hear of actors who did something that they felt pressured to, to do and I'm like no dude you like you don't have to I've well, I've been like kicked off the set for not doing stuff mm -hmm. and and like I actually love that story because then God redeemed me because I was I was a stand-in on another thing with Jennifer Garner or whatever and I had to straddle some guy for um for that's what they were rehearsing but then when it came time for my stand-in part for them to do the lighting I was like I'm not gonna straddle this dude I don't mm -hmm. know this guy that's like yeah. that's not me and so it created a little conflict on set and this was a bigger project. And so my agent called and um, like eventually after a few hours, they were like, okay, well, if you're not willing to do certain things, um, they're, they, they're gonna have to have someone come in that they know will do it. And I was like, cool, fine, that's great. And then the next day my agent called and she was like, hey, production wants you back on set. <laughs> like, Thank you, Jesus. So yeah. it was, it's just like, I don't, I want actors to know you don't have to compromise and you don't have to feel pressured into doing stuff. So that's my advice. Perfect. And to add on that, I, I think that there is incredible value in doing that because you may not be the only one and you taking the stand will, will free somebody else to also take that stand. Yeah, it's so true. I feel like um, it's like that little meme or whatever. You see one person stand up and then there's the guy whipping them and then like five people stand up and the guy's whipping in them. And then, like the whole crowd stands up and it's like, mm -hmm. come on crowd, let's all stand up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, do it. <laughs> uh, what, one of the, um, let me, one more side road. So our church values, this is, we have three core values. We value people. We value redemption stories. And we encourage every Jesus follower to be a missionary. Mm -hmm. So part of my job is to help people use their passion for a purpose. That's literally in my job description. So it, gifts for glories, like speaking my language. Um, I love being able to help people realize that there is a place in the kingdom for their gift set, whether that's fishing or whether that is um, being a school teacher, or maybe it means you like to make TikTok videos. Mm -hmm. God can use that in a powerful way as long as you're focused on um, his kingdom and not your own. I would say don't discount your gift if you feel like you don't have a gift. Ask others what your gift is because mm. people see gifts in you that you don't see in yourself. And it might be something like hospitality or things that you don't even know you have. So if you don't know what your gift is, ask somebody else. And don't think your gift is any smaller than anything else because we need every part of the body for the body to be able to function properly. There is no small thing. And God doesn't honor one part of the body more than the other. He's thankful for all of it. And he loves all of it. We need every part of it. So don't think you don't have something you can offer. Well, the first question, first thing that I would encourage them to do is to begin to ask God to help them identify what those gifts are. Oftentimes, uh, I find people have a wrong impression of what those gifts are. It's, it's what they, they think it is you know, and it's not really their gift. So begin by praying, uh, God reveal to me your gift. And then my second word is, once you know what that gift is, find a place where you can begin to use it. Find a place where you can begin to volunteer. If, if you think your gift is teaching, wonderful. Tell your pastor that you wanna begin working with the kids. Tell them you wanna be a Sunday school teacher. Tell them uh, well, you know, kids aren't my thing. No, <laughs> if you're going to teach, you got to learn how to teach kids before you can teach adults. So pray and ask God to help you identify what your gift is. Then number two, go out and do it and volunteer to do it. I love the two passages in the New Testament, Acts chapter 13. 
Uh, it talks about Paul and Barnabas being set out on the first mission, their first missions trip. And it says in Acts chapter 13 that the people prayed and the Holy Spirit said, set apart Paul and Barnabas and they laid hands on them and Paul and Barnabas were sent out on that missions trip. What people often uh, miss is all the way back in Acts 11, Paul and Barnabas have already been at the church for one year teaching. And so they, in, 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 in a modern context, they have been volunteering at the church. Mm -hmm. They've been doing what they've been asked to do at the church. So now when it comes time to identify somebody to, if I can use the phrase, put them in the spotlight to send them off, the Holy Spirit says, hey, you've got a couple guys here who have been working undercover. You've got a couple guys here who have gone unnoticed, who have been laboring among you. It's now time to lay hands on Paul and Barnabas and to set them apart. So I, I, would, I would say those three things. Number one, pray and ask God to reveal to you what your gift is. And then number two, as you begin to have a sense of that, go out and do it. Volunteer someplace. Volunteer someplace and allow others to confirm that gift in you. And as they confirm the gift in you, then number three, pursue it. Look for that open door where it can truly be used.